I'm an animal lover, as you can probably tell. I've got five dogs, six cats, seven chickens, I occasionally keep pigs and sheep and even turkeys. I think all my animals are absolutely beautiful, even that one. But not all animals are drop-dead gorgeous. In their world, as in the human world, there's the good, the bad and the ugly. Don't bring it near me, will you? I want to go out into the world and find out who deliberately has ugly animals and whether or not they're as adorable as mine. Or is beauty very much in the eye of the beholder? What on earth do you see in a pet like that? On my journey, I'll be meeting a whole host of quirky creatures. The next section does contain some nudity. And getting to know the people who champion these underdogs, cats, rats, and all manner of aesthetically challenged animals. I do like to just sit and um, watch them eat. My adventure will reach its climax at the annual mecca for mutt ugly animals, the world's ugliest dog contest in America. You know, I, I like him being ugly. But I'm not going alone. Anybody got any ugly dogs? I'm looking for a fabulously ugly British dog to take along and claim the title. You've got a very funny face. <laughs> as I explore the beauty in the beast. The first step on my journey of discovery is a visit to a VIP member of the ugly pet community. I'm on my way to meet Bez and her dog, Mugly. Mugly won the world's ugliest dog competition in America in 2012. I want to see Mugly and see exactly how high the bar is set. 13-year-old Mugly, who was abandoned as a puppy because of his quirky looks, is the only Brit ever to claim the ugly dog prize. I'm hoping owner Bev will be giving me some tips. Hello. Uh, <laughs> yes. Hi, hello. Lovely to meet you, Caroline. And lovely is, to meet this you. This is Mugly. How do you do, Mugly? How do you do? Hello, Mugly. <laughs> hello, Mugly. He is an extraordinary looking dog. He is extraordinary altogether. <laughs> what sort of dog is he? He's a Chinese crested. Oh, come, come and have a look at yes, you. Thank you. <laughs> Here it is, the world's <laughs> ugliest dog. It's quite something, this. How did it feel to win? We kind of entered it in a very British way, you know, yeah, we're just here, we're just entering, it's no problem. And it was only when the presenter said the Brit has won it and I just thought, this is overwhelming because all the press jump up on the stage and it's all very intense. It didn't really sink in till the next day, I don't think. People are very peculiar about ugly pets. Do people react strongly to Mugly? Oh, very definitely. We get two reactions, really. One, one would be, oh, he's really cute, but the rest of it is he looks like a rat, he feels like elephant skin. They're the nicer ones. But it's very interesting because I have that reaction to some other sorts of um, animals. I'm the same about rats and maybe snakes. So I kind of recognise the instinct to be slightly repelled by something. Um, but I'm trying to overcome that in myself and I'm hoping I'm going to encourage other people to overcome that in themselves too and, and to look at mm. dogs like Mugly with, with a fresh <laughs> eye and see Definitely. him for, for who he is. That's the whole focus of the competition over there. It's all about finding rescue dogs that don't look cute and fluffy and that are a little bit unusual. The world's ugliest dog contest has been held in California for over 40 years. I have to tell you that the British has won it. Yeah! Yeah! Previous title holders include Yoda, Peanut and the competition's most famous winner, Sam who scooped the prize three years on the trot and is widely credited with being the ugliest dog of all time. Let's get back to our British champ and his extensive collection of clothes. Right. This is <laughs> just part of Mugley's wardrobe. <laughs> He's got more clothes than I have. Yeah, and me. This is his Mardi Gras outfit. <laughs> do panto in that costume, wouldn't <laughs> <laughs> This is Ronald McDonald. 
Yeah. It does have a red curly wig to go with it. <laughs> we have it. We have it in every colour. That's hilarious. How much would that cost you? That was about twenty-five, <gasps> and so was that. Oh, twenty-five. Yeah. You've got hundreds of pounds worth of thousands. Of Thousands. Thousands of yeah. pounds worth. Yes, because Mugley carries it off very well. Come on, Aladdin. <laughs> Along with her beloved Mugley, Bev has four other unique looking dogs. Come on, the old muggers. Come on up, up Mugley. Oh, Mugley, don't be jealous of your darling friends. How have you ended up with all these Chinese crested dogs, Bev? Well, Mugly was the beginning. They're all rescues. I would have thought I'd have found that absolutely <laughs> disgusting, but actually it's really <laughs> sweet. sweet isn't it? Because it's quite ratty as a tail. We and I don't like rats, but that's a sweet little tail. Well, I'm, I'm a convert. <laughs> I, I, honestly, I would never have dreamt in a million years I'd ever be sitting with a bald dog. But honestly, <laughs> I really get it. I'm so, I'm genuinely amazed. I didn't <laughs> think I was going to like them at all. This year's contest is in a few weeks' time, so I've got to get a move on to find a new British champion. I've put a shout out on social media, and I'm scouring the country for a pug ugly pet that might fit the bill. I'm going to America to something called the World's ugliest dog competition. So I'm looking for what you'd call an ugly dog. To find someone who would describe their own pet as ugly, probably few and far between. Dog shows usually feature perfect and primped pooches. I'm going to gate crash one of these shows and stage a rival event with some motley mutts who wouldn't usually get a look in. I'll call it Britain's Ultimate Underdog. Now what I need to do is to find a dog show that's happening somewhere not too far away. Hi, is that Matt? Steve, sorry, hello, hi. Hi, my name's Caroline Quentin. Yeah. Yes, off the deli. <laughs> no, it is really me. No, it is really me. I've got a favour to ask you. Um, it's a bit odd, but I want to want to stage my own dog show. Can I email you? Thanks. Well, I will do. Bye bye. He didn't believe it was me, but I'm going to email him because he is me. Around half of us Brits own a pet, and scientists believe that we're drawn to cute and cuddly creatures because their wide eyes and symmetrical features remind us of human babies. Animals who don't make the grade in the looks department are the ones who are abandoned or left in shelters. In a perfect world, we would love all creatures great and small. So, in my mission to understand why people keep ugly animals, I'm going to face one of my greatest fears. I've come to meet Ashley. She has got a wide variety of animals, most of which have been literally left on the shelf at the pet shop but she's taken them in because she loves them. Ashley also has a great fondness for something I can't abide, and that's rodents. But better still, Ashley loves hairless rodents. Wish me luck. Ashley? Ooh, hang on, I'll come to you. Sorry, this is not a very nice way to say hello to somebody, but... Oh, oh God. Ashley, what are you thinking? That's a guinea pig, isn't it? Yeah, she's a hairless guinea pig. Hairless guinea pigs are a genetic mutation. The first skinny pig was created in Canada in 1978. Their eyes are pink due to lack of pigmentation. Ooh, it's looking at me. This is Nudie. Is Nudie expecting more she, guinea pigs? She is, yes. I can see those guinea pigs moving about inside yes, her. Yeah. What on earth do you see in a pet like that? People hate red-eyed animals. They think that 
they're all evil. She most certainly is not. She's she's lovely. Do you love her? Yeah, of course. Wow, that's, that's not a good looking animal. The moment I've been dreading. That's a rat, isn't it? Is that a rat? Oh, God, I'm really going to struggle with this. Like skinny pigs, hairless rats are specially bred. Time to come face to face with my biggest fear. I'm really now the Oh, my God! Don't bring it near me, will you? Fa-la-la! Oh, my God. OK, please don't let it run at me, will you? She won't. Promise? Yeah. Slowly does it. This is just a baby rat. Wow. Unbelievably, I think that animal has quite a nice face. I'm, I'm pretty impressed with myself at the moment. I'm not... I, I, I would be grateful if, if you didn't let her come on me. Um, but, oh, she's quite scampery now. Yeah, they like to sit... She won't jump off onto me, will she? No. Promise? Promise, yeah. They like to sit, like, in your neck and in pockets and things. They, they love to do that. I mean, that is a sweet face looking at me now. I, I don't love her, but maybe what I'm discovering here is that the fear is genuinely of the unknown because the longer I watch her doing her behaviours, the less repulsive she is to me. So many prejudices are based on lack of knowledge, aren't they? Yeah. She's sneezed. I'm not ready to give her a cuddle just yet. <laughs> I'm a bit thrilled because I think I am one step further on my personal journey. I may yet come to love rodents in the same way that Ashley loves all creatures, great and small. And a little bit nibbly. <laughs> internet is packed with videos of people with their pets. Loggies top the charts with two million films featuring cute cats. But not all felines are the fluffy variety. I'm meeting 41-year-old Hampshire hairdresser Linda, a lover of sphinx cats. She's got three of them. They don't have an ounce of fur between them. So why do you like hairless cats? I can't stand here. I'm allergic to furry cats. Hence you having yeah, just, naked just cats. Not. It's just less hassle, you know what I mean? It's like, the worst thing is you're going to go get your dinner and you've got a plate and there's hair all over it. That's yes, the one thing. Indeed. Like other fur-free pets, these cats have incredibly sensitive skin and have to be slathered in high-factor sunscreen if they go outside. I've got to be honest, I've not met one before now. Immediately on the eye, they're quite shocking, actually. They are first, yeah. I've got a few friends that are just like, get it off me, get it off me. <laughs> really don't like... Is that people like that it. don't like cats no, generally? They like cats, but it's just the whole thought of it being hairless. It's just like, they're like, no. They're my hot water bottles at night. This one lays on my chest, this one lays on my legs, and this one's at my feet. <laughs> they are, they do so, feel quite they're, velvety. They're, velvety and just really lovely and warm and cuddly. When you first meet them, it's, it's slightly unpleasant because you can see every bone, you can see... I think the worst bit is, is their bum. <laughs> well, I, was, I was about to say, you can see, you can see their <laughs> anus. Put the ass away. How do people react when they see them? <laughs> they're like, what is it? It's a sphinx. And they're like, oh, my God. Do you think the British are too reserved to actually go, ugh? I oh, know, I've got friends who have gone, uh, really? <laughs> get it off me. <laughs> He's really taken to you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> no, you're not having him. <laughs> nice little cat. Oh, what's that? Oh, that, that's Khaleesi on a wheel. Why do cats need an exercise wheel? These ones don't go outside. Yep. She likes it. <laughs> if I could get on it, I would. <laughs> <laughs> I 
enjoyed meeting Linda and her cats, but I don't think I'd choose a bald Moggy as a pet. Just like the rats and guinea pigs I met earlier, Sphinx cats are a genetic mutation. But why do we like to create hairless creatures? Do we want to make our pets look more like people? Maybe that's why we dress them up. I'm on my way to meet some creatures that don't look remotely human. One in five of us is scared of spiders, and most of us aren't too fond of snails either, unless you're French and you eat them. But friends Amy and Britton are crazy about creepy crawly and slimy creatures. Most people get, you know, cuddles and companionship from their pets. What do you get from tarantulas? It's not the same sort of companionship as a dog or the cat, but I get an incredible amount of peace um, when I'm watering and feeding them and tending to them. It's like an hour and a half that's just to me. Is that, is that true for you, Amy? Is there a sort of meditative quality with um, being with snails? Yeah, and... I would definitely say so. I do like to just sit and watch them eat because you can hear them crunching. That really does make sense. I hadn't ever thought of that, but... There's a tranquil quality mm. about both of these creatures, mm. which I wouldn't have anticipated and I would never have thought about. And what does it feel like having that crawling up your arm? Um, you can kind of feel the muscles moving and it's just very squishy. Can, can I touch its yeah. body? Oh, hello. And you little darling. Is it feeling where to walk? Is that how yeah. It, it's... Yeah, they're features. mostly blind and they are deaf, oh. so they just feel by vibration. That's they're basically. deaf? Yeah. yeah. Spiders are really not to fear. They're calm and gentle animals. We're raised to believe that some animals are cute and nice and interesting and others are horrible. And it's kind of a shame because people then grow up fearing certain types of animals. Well, Peach is such a pretty spider. You can feel her, which I like. You know, it's not so delicate that you don't know she's there. So you can see how it's addictive now? Yeah, do you know I mean? <laughs> really can. So perhaps all animals are beautiful in their own way, a bit like people really. Wouldn't the world be a boring place if we were all as perfect as Beyonce? With hardly any time left before the world's ugliest dog contest in California, I need to find my own hideous hound to enter into the competition. So here I am, Brentwood in Essex, at one of the UK's biggest and best dog shows. We're all used to looking at beautiful dogs winning prizes for being perfect, but I'm going to be holding auditions today, not for dogs that everyone thinks are beautiful, but for the dogs that embody the spirit of dogginess. I'm very excited. I've been given my own arena, but I have no idea if any ugly dogs are going to turn up. An hour into the show, and the only prize-winning pooch is me. <laughs> Surely one of these top dogs must have an ugly sister or brother, mother, dad, auntie. So this is the winner of most gorgeous pure breed. Ooh, she's not good for me because I'm doing the ugly dogs competition. <laughs> what is that little dog? It's a Shih Tzu. It's a little Shih Tzu. Um, oh, it's a very young Shih Tzu. 16, 16 weeks. 16 weeks. She's adorable. <laughs> Who's this? This is Peppa. Do people think Peppa's ugly? <laughs> oh, I don't know. It depends on what breed. Everyone's got their own favourite breed. Yeah, I they have. Like, yeah. I like dogs in general, so I've got lots. <laughs> I like dogs in general. How many dogs have you got? Fourteen. <laughs> <laughs> well, she hates the camera. There's a dearth of ugliness here. Everything with four legs is pretty. Eyes open, and there isn't an ugly dog in sight. Time to take action. I have made myself this board, and I'm going to go out into the world and I'm going to find ugly dogs. And I don't care if I get wet doing it. Follow me. Anybody got any ugly dogs? Any ugly dogs? No, no dogs at all. I'm looking for Britain's ultimate underdog. Your dog, I suspect, is too good looking. Anybody got any ugly dogs? Bring them to my show. I'm holding auditions for ugly dogs. 
no ugly dogs here. I want to hold an ugly dog show. You're pretty. What are you rolling in? Oh, sit down. I'm looking beyond the cute and cuddly. Oh, God. And learning to love ugly pets. It's slightly unpleasant because you can see every bone. You can see... I think the worst bit is, is the bum. <laughs> and I'm searching for a British dog to take to the world's ugliest dog contest. Your dog, I suspect, is too good looking. At my ultimate underdog show, things are looking up. The rain's cleared, and hurrah, there's a queue of motley mutts. I've enlisted the help of Frank Kane, who usually presides over the best in show at Crafts. I've also invited two special guest judges, Bev Nicholson and the 2012 winner of the World's Ugliest Dog Contest, Mugly. Look, completely hairless, completely hairy, tiny... <laughs> <laughs> Don't eat him, Barney. <laughs> How easy is it going to be, Frank, do you think, to judge this competition? Beauty is in the eye of the beholder. What's ugly for one person is beautiful for another. And this is where the panel of judges will have to decide. Do you think we're going to struggle to reach an agreement on this, Absolutely. Ben? <laughs> do you? Yes, I really do. Because it's your gut. You go with your gut and that's, that's personal. May we have our first entrant, please? First up on my spinning podium to celebrate less than perfect pooches is two-year-old heavyweight Oriana. This is a Neapolitan Mastiff. They go back to Roman times and they were bred to lead the legions into battle. They're very lovable, devoted to their owners, aren't they? They're very devoted to their owners. And that's, that's what we have dogs for, devotion to their owners and their personalities, not just the looks, yes? So we'll be looking for that, I think, in our dog today. <laughs> <laughs> and the next dog, please. Daisy may not have beauty, but she's certainly got brains. There's no way she's getting on that podium. <laughs> oh, Daisy! Very gorgeous, sweet. Oh, wow. That's hey. very good, yes. Will she do that with me? Thank you, I did all the work. <laughs> now, who have we got here? It's not just an ordinary corgi, it's a cardigan Welsh corgi. Unusual corgi Dilbert might be fit for a queen, but is he royally ugly enough for me? People always stop us in the street and say, that's a weird looking dog. <laughs> and, um, and we think he's beautiful, but other people unfortunately don't. You know, he might not win the top prizes, but he's still a good specimen of a cardigan Welsh corgi. The, rare dog. Uh, with the perfect uh... dog never exists. Could Timmy be a contender? Now, this to me is a really unique dog because he looks a real Heinz 57. He was born with a hair lip. Born with a hair lip? Yeah. He was a dog that shouldn't have lived. He had an operation. Timmy, but... Timmy, let me look at your movable nose. Timmy. Timmy. It looks like he's smiling. Great, great personality. We don't know their pedigree. Yeah. They're from an alliance in the park, in the dark, yes. <laughs> Next up, it's Logan. <laughs> one blue eye and one brown eye. He's a peculiar looking beast, I have to be honest. He makes your day, he really does. And finally, this strange looking thing. You've got a very funny face. This is Frida. Frida, come on, Frida. You've got a you? Come on, Frida. Frida. Now, Frida gets told she's ugly almost every day when I take her out for a walk. No. Ugliness to some is beauty to another, yes. And I'm sure you look at her and think she's beautiful. I like her uniqueness. Yep. The fact that her, almost her whole face is sort of on the top of her head. Yep. Why should Frida win? Because she's perfectly imperfect. An extraordinary clutch of canines to add to my search for Britain's underdog. Time for a debrief, although Mugly has largely been keeping his views to himself. Inscrutable, as always. Oriana, what sort of dog's Oriana? Neapolitan Mastiff. Yeah, beautiful, yeah. But, but too beautiful for us. Frida... Too timid. She's too she timid. Too timid. Yeah. The, the competition is very loud. There's thousands of people there, and it's you need a special type of dog. I've been quite taken by the fact that they've taken on these dogs and they don't seem to give two hoots about how the world looks at them. They love their dog and they don't care what people say. All of today's entrants have been winners, but the standards at the World's Ugliest Dog Contest are exceedingly high. 
These dogs are just too good looking. I'm just looking at some photographs of previous winners and I think the competition is going to be pretty stiff. This is Quasimodo who won in 2015 and he's not exactly a looker, is he? <laughs> Look at Peanut. Peanut's a corker. <laughs> oh, Peanut. Look at Yoda. He looks like a bit of belly button fluff with eyes. I'm actually quite excited because I'm on my way to meet a lady called um, Storm who has a dog called Chase. It sounds to me like Chase could have all the qualities I'm looking for. A dog that could perhaps replace the marvellous Mugly, the UK winner of the US Championships in 2012. Let's hope we can do this. Come on, Chase, be the dog I'm looking for. I may finally have made a breakthrough. Chinese crested Chase and his owner, 48-year-old Storm from South Wales, got together seven years ago and have been inseparable ever since. This breed has had more winners at the world's ugliest dog contest than any other. By the way, Chase isn't being rude. He's sticking his tongue out because a defective gene means the hairless variety of this breed usually lose their gnashers at an early age. Oh, my goodness. Chase is one hell of an ugly dog. He's perfect. Hello, baby. Hello, baby. I can't Hello, wait to get to know him and Storm who has a whole pack of dogs in her holiday caravan. Are they important to you, your dogs? They're Storm. my life. Are they? Yeah. yeah. How many have you got? Ten. They're all rescue. Yeah. They've all come from some quite bad situations. Chase. <gasps> he was rescued from a puppy farm. Chase! Chase, is it all right if I... Oh, he's so warm. Oh, look. He is a little sun worshipper. So his one eye is a different colour. He's got a cataract. Oh, jeez. I've never owned a hairless dog, and I've certainly never owned a dog that looked like this. <laughs> it does take a bit of getting used to, but actually they're very tactile. Yeah, they're, it, it's skin, the same as yeah. anything else, and they're very good for people who are missing out on that, that type of contact. Yes. Because cutching one of those is lovely. Yeah. <laughs> Chase has been a lifeline for Storm who has suffered from crippling anxiety since a traumatic accident turned her life upside down. My mother was killed when I was 18. That was very difficult for me because it was just me and her living together. We were on a motorbike and we had horse and she was killed. My last memories of her were CPR. And for a very long time, I, you know, I had dreams. Oh. Uh, I, I struggled. Chase has been absolutely marvellous with me. I've used him as my assistant's dog, which means I take him everywhere I go. It's almost a, um, a security blanket. Yeah, security blanket <laughs> yes. or a pacifier or yeah. something like that. Yes, yeah. yeah. And also people talk to me through the dog very often, so I also have that... Is that easier? Yeah, I have that little bit of extra space. Yeah. So there are times in my life, yeah, you, <laughs> when I would have isolated myself. Yeah. And a normal looking dog yeah. would not have got so much attention. Yeah. But he sometimes does, which means I have to then be sociable. I have to then talk to people. But he's a funny looking thing too. He's got comedy value. Yes, you. He is very <laughs> unique. He's, he's sweet. A Chinese crested rescue dog who looks like a gremlin, has no teeth, a dodgy eye, and who walks like a crab. Chase has all the ingredients to be a champion ugly dog. Above all, he helps Storm to deal with her anxiety, and he is her official assistance dog. Of all the mutts I've met, he deserves to be celebrated. Storm, Chase, will you come with me to the States? Seriously? Yes! <laughs> I'm thrilled. I'm thrilled. I'm thrilled. I'm not sure about him, but I'm thrilled. I think he'll have a nice time because he's so relaxed and chilled out. He'll like the sun. Oh, darling, well done. He's quite shaking with delight. <laughs> At her home in Neath, Storm is preparing for her first transatlantic flight. 
With Chase's help, of course. That's his assistant's dog harness. And for when we're there, he's got a little flag. So we're going to be on the plane together. You're going to be by my feet. But I'm afraid you're not allowed to eat for the whole of the flight. That's going to be the biggest thing. I'm the one that's nervous, isn't it, Chase? Come on then, Chase. Off to America. Wear the seatbelt. <laughs> the way, I can't resist popping in on one more ugly pet who lives in Boston. I've never seen a bird <laughs> like Rhea in my life. What is she? She is a lovebird. Yeah, people, I mean, people do have lovebirds, yeah. and of course, and normally they're rather beautiful with their soft colours and their pinks and their yeah. greys and everything. What, where are her feathers? Well, she has a disease that made her feathers to fall out. Um, her, the disease is called Cetacean Beacon Feather Disease. She used to be yellow, very pretty, and never got to see her like that, though. Um, when I adopted her, she had already lost all her feathers. She doesn't fly, does no. she? She can't fly. Nothing. So birds burn calories just like us. When we walk, they burn calories when they fly. And because she can't fly, um, I feel bad, so I was like, you know what? When when she came here, I was like, you're gonna be free. So she is free to roam around the house all day. Does she get cold? Yes, she gets very, very cold, so she needs to stay warm. That's the most important thing for her. It's is it true that people make jumpers and things for her? Oh my God, yes, I have over 300. I get sweaters every single day. Thanks to the devoted owner, Isabel, Rhea has become a darling of the social media world. She tweets and has half a million followers. When I first heard about her, I thought, I don't know what the fuss is going to be about, but actually she's got a what? She's all personality, isn't she? She is, she is, and she's very, she's so sassy. And yeah. Funny. Usually, if I was going to be that close to a bird with no feathers, it would be because I'm about to eat it. But I have to say that Rhea, in the flesh, is a delight. Nowadays, I think I'm going to look at all birds and think, you're overdressed. Feathers are overrated. In my search for ugly pets, remarkably, most have been fur or feather free. Does that make an animal less attractive? After all, to many of us, bald is beautiful. Ugly showstopper Chase, Sun Hat, and owner Storm have arrived in the USA. And look what I've got you a pair of sunglasses. And are soaking up the sunshine ahead of the big day. So, what do you think of California, Chase? <laughs> Come on, Chase, let's go and try the pool. I'm in California, where my journey into the world of aesthetically challenged animals is about to get even uglier. The day has finally arrived. We are off to the world's ugliest dog contest. I'm going to go and meet Storm and Chase and see if they are as up for this as I am. Let's bring this title home to Blighty. I'm really impressed with what Chase is wearing. He looks fantastic. So just talk me through what he's actually got on. He starts with a little vest because obviously he's wearing an assistant dog harness. It basically tells the world that he's my assistant's dog. Because you've never been on a plane. Never been on a jet plane. How have you coped, actually? You know, I've not just left Britain. I've come to America and I would have been freaking out without him. I mean, it's an odd competition anyway to want your dog to be the ugliest yes. dog. Let's just yes. get that out there now. But you want Chase to be the world's ugliest dog. Yes. Yes, because this competition isn't about maligning or making fun of animals. It's about saying that it's not about what the dog looks like. It's what's inside that counts. Chase is a puppy farm reject, possibly because of his looks. 
He came into rescue at only a few weeks old. He stayed there for quite a few years and then until I adopted him seven years ago. And, and yet, I think that's right, it's because of what they look like they get left behind, yeah. isn't it? Let's be honest. And yet, you could not wish for a better dog. If he's not the ugliest, he's certainly the loyalist. He's the most adorable. He is beautiful. Shall we get going? Yes. Hey! <laughs> The world's ugliest dog contest attracts crowds of over 3,000 people, along with the world's media. The winning pooches and their owners get a prize of $1,500, a trip to New York and a year's supply of dog biscuits. Look, here, look, we're here. This is why we've come. <laughs> it's quite impressive, isn't it? I'm going to get a stage fight. <laughs> well, I'm very excited. It's really lovely to see it in all its glory. Look, and there are the big um I got prizes. the sizes of them! Before the show, Chase has an opportunity to woo his audience. What do you think? Has he got a chance? Yes. yes. Would you like a cuddle? Yes. <laughs> You're a beauty. You're a beauty. Is he going to be in the contest? Yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. He's going to win the contest. Yes. That is the winner right there. It's a big day for me, and it's a really, really big day for Chase. I just hope that Chase isn't completely overwhelmed by the entire experience, because I'm looking around and there's some very serious competition. Chase is up against 23 rivals and facing fierce competition from three-year-old heavyweight Martha, a Neapolitan Mastiff with a flatulence problem, Brussels Griffin Crosses Mo and Monkey, and a kennel full of hairless Chinese Cresteds, the breed that has reigned supreme in this contest. Zuma, Rascal, Icky and Josie. She took second place last year, though. Oh, so she could win it? I don't know. There's some pretty creepy-looking dogs here. <laughs> Zuma has taken second and Icky's taken third. Yep. So, but they've never actually won the title. This is Mo, and Mo is one of the first people I've met today with, with proper fur. Yes, he, he hasn't lost any of it. He's lost his sight and his hearing, but he definitely has his fur. You are entering Martha into the competition, is that right? That's right. She's quite something to look at, isn't she? She's spectacular, absolutely. Do you think she's beautiful or ugly? Both. Fugly. Have you ever entered this competition before? Yep. This is our fifth time. Fifth time? Yes. And has Monkey ever won anything? She won second place. Four years ago, I think. Oh! Yeah. Oh, so you remember the chance? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, she's there. <laughs> I think it's fun when people think he's ugly. Do you? And do yeah. people say that to you? Just... Oh, they say it all the time. Because, in a way, it's kind of rude because they, you know, this is my kid, and I walk by and they go, oh my god, that dog's ugly out loud. Do you feel extra pressure representing Wales yes. here? Yes, we really need to. <laughs> While Storm and Chase get the celebrity treatment, I get the inside scoop from the judges. How long has this competition been going? There has been an ugly dog competition in Petaluma for over 50 years. Wow. And uh, when it started, it was for fun. You know, a bunch of guys said, we need to do something different, get some attention for Petaluma. But over the years, it has evolved to be about rescuing animals that may not be perfect. Some dogs are not always chosen in the shelters, and we like to say that they are all lovable, all adoptable, and they're beautiful on the inside. Can you tell me what you're looking for in, in the world's ugliest dog? I think I'm going to be looking for the dogs that, that, that sort of uh, are comfortable in their own skin. You know, they're not uncomfortable with their looks, right? I think some of them don't know they're ugly. Well, it's so true of so many of us in life, isn't it? Well, it's a good lot. I'm really looking forward to the judging and seeing all the animals. Minutes away from showtime and a final pep talk. How are you feeling? Oh, nervous. Very nervous. There's some stiff competition here today. There really is, and there are a lot of people who have a lot of experience of this gig, actually. Oh, yes. So, so few, few of them have been here several times before. And we are such a newbie. <laughs> Try and enjoy it. It's a one-off. Yes. It's showtime. Hello, everybody. Y'all set for the world's ugliest dog contest. <laughs> dog number one, ladies and gentlemen, from Davis, California, Zuma. He's dishy. Too handsome. Martha. Oh, what a face, huh? Oh, she's lovely. Her coat is so beautiful. I kind of looked like me last night after that second bottle of wine down the road. I'm not going to argue that. 
Mo Alfred Herman Shane. That's the real competition, that dog. That's the one I think we've got to be. It's a beautifully ugly dog. Monkey was rescued from a hoarding situation when she was six months old. She's a very unique little girl. Ladies and gentlemen, Rascal. All right. He's the fifth generation to carry on the Ugly Dog Dynasty after his dad, Rascal, who won back in 2002. It's Chase's big moment. All right, let's give a big warm American welcome to contestant number five from the UK, stored by Storm Shaler. We have Chase. This is, of course, the dog that has come the furthest, all the way from Great Britain. Come on, Chase. Oh, take the sausage. Good luck, Chase. Back across the sea. And this dog is an assistance dog. Yes. Has this dog met the queen? No, afraid what? not. No. I like that the legs are so crazy disproportionate yes. to the rest of the yeah. body. Got a whole lot of shaking going on there, too. <laughs> this is a lot of pressure for a little dog. Yeah. He's doing really he's well. Good. He is. Yes, he's got a cataract in that eye, but the other eyesight's perfect. And, and the tongue here hanging out like that yes. is natural? Yes, because he's lost his teeth. He has no teeth. Yeah. <laughs> Let's make Chase feel that. welcome yes. his first time in the USA. Wonderful creature. Hey, I like that sideways crab walk that he has. That's a, <laughs> girl, that's a bonus. <laughs> Look at that. Look at the legs on that dog. Oh my gosh. Storm and Chase have done Great Britain proud, but with such stiff competition, it could go either way. We want to invite all of our dogs and all of their handlers to please come to the stage right now as we prepare for judging and awards. <laughs> it's decision time. Will Storm and her loyal, perfectly imperfect dog, Chase, take the crown? The three finalists. In no particular order In here. In no particular order. Martha. <laughs> Mo. Oh, no. Chase. They've made the final three. So if we can just have those three finalists uh, remain on the stage, we will ask the audience to help us by cheering just as loud as you can. First for Mo. Ladies and gentlemen, we have reached a decision. Okay, in the third position from Wales, we have Chase. Third place. Out of all the ugliest dogs in the world, it really is an extraordinary achievement. I'm just Back. I just did not expect to do Gobstack. so well. <laughs> Chase and Storm should be very proud. Good result. And our winner of the world's ugliest dog, oh, 2017, Martha. He's just taking everything in his stride, though, as he usually does. Congratulations. Thank you. Congratulations. 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 <laughs> well done. Well done, Chase. I just, Brilliant. I thought we were going to get such stiff competition. It was a really, really tough competition. And it was lovely to see a different dog win, to be honest. It, it was exciting to see something other than a little crested yes. Chinese, much as we adore you. And how are we going to get this back home? I have no idea. And this. Oh no, really? Yes, this is the, I want this as well. I think they'll send me back in that, probably. <laughs> send me back in the crate, yeah. it's been great.
great. Oh, it's been it? wonderful. Yeah. I just, I'm still, I just, <laughs> I lost my breath. We are done, darling. <laughs> oh, we did good. Oh. The dog did good. They may not have bagged first prize, but Storm and Chase have come a long way. And so have I. Oh, God. Come on, the old buggers. Come on up, up, buggy. I think what I found most moving about this entire experience is how many animals get left behind because of what they look like. And what's brought the most joy to me has been the fact that there are people out there who would always take home the underdog, the ugly, the unfortunate, the one like the wallflower at the dance would always get left behind. But hooray, those people that love animals, people like me who really adore them, for them, there are no ugly pets.